worst is over for this pandemic, that we have passed the peak, if you uh, like, in your own words, uh, that uh, the recovery uh, will continue. It may be slow, uh, it may be bumpy, uh, but we are on the path of this positive trajectory. So can I ask you then, the WOO that you've released today says that we won't need as much oil from OPEC as we did in 2019 until 2026. So is it correct to assume that between now and 2026, you're still going to have to have restraint and cuts? Uh, the world oil outlook 2021, which we just uh, unveiled uh, today, uh, is the first outlook uh, released by any reputable institution. We have taken the uh, first step uh, and uh, we are positive in this outlook in terms of demand. Demand will continue to grow till 2045. This world uh, is and will remain very thirsty uh, for consumption of energy. Uh, we are projecting 28% growth in energy between now and 2045, and on good reason. Uh, Manus, the world population is going to grow by about 20%. Nearly 1.7 billion people will come into uh, this world. And we have also projected to you that the global economy will more than double between now and 2045. And we believe that going into COP26, mm -hmm. that energy poverty will be brought back on the front banner uh, together with climate. And therefore, the world will double its efforts in uh, achieving the SDG 7, which the United Nations uh, has resolved uh, several years ago. The gas markets, natural gas in the US and the UK and Asia it is roaring higher. What scale of crisis? How would you describe the gas market? Are we in crisis? Well, I, I know the volatility that we are currently witnessing is uh, on the high side. Uh, and this volatility is largely uh, being driven by factors outside uh, the control of OPEC, as well as the OPEC and non-OPEC in the declaration of cooperation and hence the need uh, for this global dialogue to be all inclusive, uh, particularly uh, with regards uh, to the energy uh, tr transition. Uh, the volatility that you are seeing in gas is also visible uh, in, the, in the oil market. And uh, we are- the gas, Do you think that the gas crisis as people are calling it is going to boost oil demand. I'm seeing numbers like 500,000 barrels per day next quarter. Do you agree with that assessment? We, uh, in our projections uh, in the short term, continue to see demand uh, 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 growing uh, progressively uh, as countries open up uh, from the uh, COVID uh, restrictions and encumbrances, as travels open, uh, as more planes fly, as the restrictions uh, between countries are eased, uh, there is no doubt that uh, uh, the large contraction that we saw in demand last year uh, will not likely uh, to materialize. Uh, we are on an upswing of mm -hmm. the demand, demand recovery. Uh, and uh, the concern now is how uh, together both producers and consumers going into this transition uh, will come back uh, to the fundamentals, to the basics. That do you no, think, no do you single- think in general, that the, the, the gas situation, I just want to finish off with this. Do you think, how do we alleviate? What can alleviate the gas spike? Do you think that Nord Stream 2 coming online will help? It is generally a function of supply. Mm. And uh, you cannot even attribute that to one single supply source. Uh, I know in one of the countries in Europe, 
uh, the narrative is an, a shortage of uh, truck drivers, uh, not on the, the molecules. So it depends on from country to country, but we can say it's a major supply constraint uh, mm. in the face of rising demand. 